All right, guys, so I want to talk about something we usually kind of disregard. A lot of times we focus on appearance and stuff, so I'm curious what you guys think makes a good protagonist in a video game. Do I want to start with you? Oh, great. Well, I usually like it if the protagonist is a woman, because it usually isn't. It's always a white man in his mid to late 30s. So whenever it is a female, gotta represent. Even, even if the game's not good? I haven't played a game that's not good that's a female protagonist. There are a lot of games out there that aren't good that are your regular run-of-the-mill protagonist. I want to see what, what Rockstar could do with a, a female character. I hope they oh. do that on the line. I mean, that'd be a big I feel like that's a game Delilah would play. Running around as a psychotic woman just killing everyone. I do that already, so. That's yeah, true. All right, Andy. Um, so what would be your ideal, your definition of an ideal protagonist? Right. Um, well, I like one that has a lot of internal struggle going on because, um, a lot of stories now are getting more complicated and a lot more characters have like a lot more going on. So you see characters, uh, Joel's a great example from The Last of Us, because Joel, he was a good guy, he was a family man, he had a daughter, and he's just trying to do his best. Then all the world went to hell and he has all this dark stuff going on. Everyone's trying to kill him and Ellie basically. And he can't exactly respond with like, you know, words or trying to be nice or trying to like understand what they're going to coming from or whatever, but like he's gotta kill them. So there is that little bit of that part of him that doesn't want to do this stuff, and you as a player kind of get that, but you also, it's a video game, you kind of got to kill people, so it's a little bit of that going on. Also, I really like when an environment can help flesh out a character. Far Cry 3 was a great example of that, mm -hmm. because Jason Brody, <laughs> I actually, when I began the game, I hated him, because he's a douchey white kid, uh, just parents are rich, does whatever he wants, you don't care about what happens to him, and all this horrible stuff happens, and you're kind of like, good, this guy kind of has it coming. But then you see the environment sort of shape him, and you see everyone reacting to that, and that makes really deep, interesting characters. Like, it could have been a movie, almost, of yeah. how well they really flesh this character out. And it also helps that I personally prefer a protagonist, especially in first-person games, to speak, because a lot of them are. But Naj, yeah. you, I know you mentioned, going kind of back to what Andy was saying about characters that have the inner struggles, you were talking earlier about Snake from Metal Gear Solid. Oh, God. Um, I know it always seems like I'm talking about Snake, but, I mean, he's kind of the perfect example. And, like, in the Phantom Pain, if you haven't played the Metal Gear series, you know, him and Solid Snake are usually, you know, the heroes. But in the Phantom Pain, he's actually being, he's going to go through so much that he's actually going to become the villain. And that's what I like in a protagonist, how dynamic they are. How they change from the beginning of a story to the end of a story, or from game to game. Like, a stale character like Aiden Pierce from Watch Dogs is like, I didn't feel like he lost his niece. Like, you know, like his niece wasn't killed. Like, he didn't seem like he was faced, but I mean, even though he was bent on revenge, it didn't seem like he was real like affectionate to the fact that he just lost his niece and I don't know, just like that stay on the swimming character and them not being dynamic is just, you know, it's just not a pleasant experience. I mean, even though the gameplay was nice on Watch Dogs, it just, I didn't get a chance to watch him grow as a character. So that was just like, like, blah, I guess. Yeah, it's, like, for me, it's always, um, especially with, with more intense games, like The Last of Us kind of does it a little bit and I know Metal Gear Solid kind of hinges on it is making uh, games where they have moral dilemmas. Mm -hmm. So I can't remember what his name is right now because I haven't played in a long time, but in Spec Ops The Line, which is probably one of the best war games I've played in my entire life. I heard about it. I've never played that game. Um, it is it is so intense. Like the, the decisions you have to make, you do not want to make these decisions as you're playing. Mm -hmm. And the main, the, the protagonist speaks, and you know, it's all of the basic things. Yeah, I'm like that. But <laughs> you see, like he starts off, and it, the way it starts off is the game is very upbeat, very happy, very relaxed, like, I mean, they're in a war, but there's still, there's humor, and there's, they get along very well. But by the end of the game, it's like, you, your character changes immensely within the span of the video game alone mm -hmm. and it happens so smoothly it's not like you're sitting there going oh all of a sudden he's angry but um so does it does it bother you with silent protagonists and if so what bothers you and what are you, when are you okay with it Lila? I don't think it bothers me especially with like amnesia where you're playing as the main well, of course, you're the main protagonist. But, like, you find out more about yourself. It's really just, like, a mystery as to who you are, and you're just gaining all this stuff. 
And I don't mind that. I kind of like the silence. I mean, it really helps for Amnesia just because it's a horror game. And so you want that silence to creep you out. And you see also in Portal and Portal 2 where it's not really about the main character. It's about the world itself. And I kind of like those games. Uh, so are there, like, are there exceptions? Because like, you, you have a different opinion. Well, with first person games and silent characters, like, I don't like how the fact that the protagonist doesn't talk in Battlefield. It, it, it's just kind of awkward to me how everyone else is have, having their own like conflicts with each other and then like you can understand it, they're just like, like just looking look at them have their problems and it's just like, it's, it's kind of awkward. So now, uh, in times where the character is silent, I would like to have, you know, more choices to make because they, I mean, with a silent character, it leads you to have more choices because there isn't no more dialogue from coming from the protagonist so it leaves you gives you more freedom to make your own choices that's the only time i really feel like there's a pro it's appropriate to have a silent uh, protagonist but other than that it's just kind of awkward to me it's kinda, i'm just sitting there just watching the world you know, just go past me while i just sit there in, in silence like yeah what's your stance on it um, well, it's funny you mentioned Battlefield because I'm thinking now about uh, Modern Warfare 2. Love that game. One of the worst inconsistencies that really pulls me out mm. is there's sections when you play as this character Soap and he's talking and, you know, he's a character there like giving you orders and telling you what to do. Then you play as him and you're a mute. And I don't understand that at all and it really pulls me out of what I actually really like the game. Like, it has a really good story to it. Um, but I think, yeah, the biggest issue is like a world needs to really be there. If you're gonna have a silent protagonist, there's yeah. gotta be a lot of mm -hmm. stuff going on, or at least like like lore, like a backstory mm -hmm. to this place. If you can't say anything or add to it yourself. And just to add to that, it's like how Grand Theft Auto Three was, how you know the main protagonist what was his name Claude. Claude. Yeah, it was just like he was mute. You know that was cool for the you know the PS2 Xbox generation. Like you know we we didn't mind that, we didn't really care. But now in this generation where you know everything's in HD, everything you know is. The graphics that we have these days are just, you know, just high end and the voice acting is spot on. Like gaming is up there with movies now. Like we need like great voice acting and a good, a good performance from the protagonist to, for us to care about the story. If there's not a good performance from the story then, I mean from the protagonist then we don't care about the story as much. And I think it also depends on the kind of game. Like I think with, with something like Grand Theft Auto 3 or with Portal or even with, with the first two Bioshocks, the story is so important mm -hmm. in the character. It's okay in those games for the character not to speak because it's not required. But you get games like Modern Warfare or Battlefield or other predominantly war games where it's first person and they don't speak. And it's like you can't, in real life, you can't get away. And they, they want to channel your personal self into that, but it's not like you're going to sit there and when you get a call, it's like, hey, do you read me? You can't just sit there. You look like an idiot if you're like, yeah, I read you. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Like, you, it just, it doesn't work like that. And it's, I think, to an except, to a certain degree, it does work for games. But, like, Dishonored, for example, is one game where I don't think the protagonist speaks at all. But you still get this incredible sense of relation with him. But then again, you have a game like, Bioshock Infinite, which is brighter, but still has a similar feel to it, and Troy Baker's just talking the entire time. <laughs> so it, it can work, and it can hurt it, so it's always interesting. But, so if you had to choose your favorite protagonist from any game, oh Andy, let's start with you. Uh, and if you say Joel from The Last of Us. I'm not, I'm not gonna say Joel from The Last of Us, but I really Joel. like him. Um, like Joel, like I mentioned that Joel and Jason, all these characters, they're ones I can really identify with and put myself into, but I like the thought of also just playing someone that like could be a real person and could exist outside of you playing them. And that'd be Lee from the Walking Dead game, the Telltale game. Thank you. Lee <laughs> you go. was a really great character. And I, I don't know that many people who've played it multiple times. Cause like I know friends who like, they play it once, they get this story and they're like, oh no, that's the story, that's it. But like, I know tons of have played it multiple times, myself included, and even when he's, you know, choosing between, oh, I'm gonna really listen, listen to this guy and see what he has to say, or, God, this guy's an asshole, I gotta talk shit <laughs> him. Either way, he felt like a real character. Um, I really loved his interaction with Clementine and all the other characters. And just, there's a lot going on with that character, to the point that one of the endings, like, Oh. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. But yeah, don't spoil it. E yeah, don't but spoil it. either it's way, emotional. the game ends. It's super emotional, and yeah. you can definitely like feel something there. Like I, I burst into tears. I straight up cried, which 
I don't know any other game I can really say on, that about. Man. I, I'm, I am a man. It's you are yeah, described it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I agree with you on the on the Walking Dead. I mean, but then again, it goes back to excellent voice acting. Like the, oh, the okay. acting that game was was just spot on, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to finish season two. Yeah. But I mean, as for me. As much as I would want to, like, you know, just piggyback off the big boss thing just because like, he's my favorite char character of all time, I'm going to just, you know, put that to the side because I feel like I talk about him too much anyway. But I would have to go with, uh, with Laura Croft in the Tomb Raider 2013 reboot. It was like, you know, even though the only problem I had with that reboot was the fact that she went from this scared, you know, adventure girl to just, you know, Rambo in like mm -hmm. a, a matter of a couple scenes. But then again, her character was dynamic and she changed throughout her adventure and I like I liked that. It was a it was a good origin story. But I mean at the same time I wish other games would learn from that instead of just, you know, having, you know, how Grand Theft Auto Five, how the characters just don't progress. They're just like kinda of just stuck in the same mindset and they don't progress through the story. Yeah. Della La <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably gonna have to cheat just because he was the main character for three games. And that's just Ezio Auditory. Uh, yes. Well, I mean, you you just, you just get his background and that, you know, all his family besides his mom and his sister has just been murdered and for a bad reason. And then you, you just feel like so much for him and you just want to continue playing. I mean, I think they stretched it out to a point where they should have stopped maybe <laughs> after the, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, he's, he's my favorite out of all of them all the playable characters, and I also just, I, he was hot. That was another reason. <laughs> see, I, I, was, I thought you would see him as one of like those misogynistic people. Not oh no, he definitely was, but he was. He, he was cool. Yeah. Him. Like, I think I mean, he acknowledged he, the fact that he was that way. Yeah, but it, I mean, if he I saw him it. in real life and he acted like that, I probably would try to punch him in his face, but, but then as you, a like, character. you smolder and you just be like, oh. <laughs> just I, you know what, I was gonna say, Ezio, but now Aha. it's um, it probably Connor from Assassin's Creed. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, um, no. Honestly, Honestly, I'm going to I want to see you defend that. <laughs> <There's> no, <laughs> you know, playing it the second time, he's he's working his way up. But um, sure. Wei Shen from Sleeping Dogs. Mm. Hands down, probably up there in my top now that, five. Now, now don't spoil it for me because I'm still waiting to get the defense. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna oh, do, cool. I'm not gonna ruin the story. But his the voice actor is remarkable. Um, he, he's got such a strong character development, he sticks so true to his morals, like you can see the struggle he has with his morals throughout the game and trying to balance the good and the bad and trying to decide which side of the law he wants to be on. The only problem I have with him is in Hong Kong he's the only Chinese person that doesn't speak Chinese. Listen, um, it's just, really strange, but fan everyone fan else, fan I guess, yeah. it, but it's strange because everybody else will talk to him in Chinese, but he will respond in English. Even the people that seem like they don't speak English, he responds to in English, and they're like, oh, I understand you. The only other person is the girl, the, the role that Emma Stone plays and the police chief who's English, but it's it's really weird. But other than that, um, it, it he's just such a strong, strong character. Right. Um, and, and, and just one more thing, I just think that in today's gaming generation that a game isn't good without a good protagonist and a good story. I think if hmm. if it's not if it doesn't have a good story and a good protagonist, I'm not paying sixty dollars for it. It's going right to the fifteen dollar bin. I'll wait till the price drops and you get know, it used. Yeah, yeah, get it used or something because I'm honestly I'm playing a game like as much as I love gameplay, I'm playing it to, to sit there and enjoy, you know, a good story. I want to be told a good story. I mean, I know I'm always repeat myself on this show, but it's just like <laughs> I want I want the developer to sit there, like sit me down and get me to engage with the story. The gameplay, I already, I already know what to expect from the gameplay from most developers. So I mean, that's that's you know I'm already expecting that good gameplay. Mm -hmm. But you can't tell me a story. I mean, you had my attention for about maybe the opening scene, and then if it's not good, I'm taking it right back to GameStop. So mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything else anyone wants to add? I mean, I think it's not interesting hearing you talk about Etsy and you talk about Wei Shin. Because it really says a lot that like you can have these like you know characters with all these like different struggles going on. They can be very dark or like do some pretty messed up stuff. But if they're charming and you like them, you kind of get over a lot actually. Mm -hmm. Like Ezio, like we said, <laughs> he's he, not a very good person. Sometimes. I mean, I mean he, he does it for the right reasons in, yeah. in the first game he's in, but he also is kind of a misogynist and he just kind of spends most of his time murdering people. <laughs> I mean, originally, like in the very one of the very first scenes you play as him, he gets in a fight with a bunch of 
It's it's like Romeo and Juliet. Like he gets in a fight with the, with the rival family's mm -hmm. people in the middle of, of a bridge. Like right. That's not exactly a good first impression. No. But yet, Delilah swoons, <laughs> and then they keep making Ezio games. Well, not anymore. Well, no, not anymore. But maybe they'll have a shout out in Assassin's Creed Unity. Hmm. I don't even have the new console, so I can't play it yet. Well, you can get what's the other one that's coming out. No. For... Oh, no, really? I'm yeah, done rogue. with that. Okay, if it's not Ezio, then it doesn't yeah, The fact right. that they're still catering to these last gen consoles is, you know, last year. Hey, I give them props. This is the last year for My Xbox like, Live yeah. membership ends on the 31st, so it looks like all my time is going to be spent on the PS4.